All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town Board of the Town of Austin regular meeting for Tuesday, November 26th, 2019. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. So we have several public hearings tonight. Uh, we'll begin with the 2020 tentative budget for the Town of Austin. We have met with most of our department heads, and last week we heard the budget presentation by our amazing budget director, Maddie Zahach. Um, lots of thanks go out to Maddie as well as uh, Dale Ferreira uh, for working so hard on getting us ready for um, presenting the budget to the public, and also to all of our department heads for working very hard to keep uh, everything pretty much in line. The budget's not slated for adoption until after, until at at our December 10th meeting. So even if tonight's hearing is closed, uh, we continue to look for public feedback until the very last moment. Is there anybody here to address the board on our 2020 budget? Are there any comments from the board? Nope. Budget Director Madeline Zahach, would you like to add anything? Comments for this evening? Uh, two very quick things. Um, the first one is pertaining to our capital plan, and this actually came up um, in our budget meetings. The way that we display um, the debt um, is going to change a little bit. Um, we had talked about this earlier um, with uh, Tom Warren today, actually, our, our controller as well, um, who mentioned that some of the um, projects that are already uh, in motion, but the money's already been borrowed, um, those are basically being double counted um, by virtue of the fact that they're in the 2020 column. So we're gonna change how that looks. Um, and everything else can get bumped to the work session discussion, which is directly following this meeting. Right. And we still have to meet with two more department heads, so more to come on those. Okay, fantastic. So uh, if there's nobody else here to comment on the budget, 2020. Okay, uh, that. I make mean, a motion to adjourn. I would adjourn it if you're if there's still going to be more stuff that's going to be added and changed. Is that the case, or we still have to meet with two more people? I don't know that we have another opportunity for public. For well, you could always. I mean, you could continue it and then close it on December 10th and then vote. I mean, those are the options, or you could close it now. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, just typically what, what we do yes. is we close it if there are no comments, right. and we continue to take comments from the public that are just not part of the public hearing Correct. record. I think that's what um, we, and we then certainly do. any changes that are made between the tentative budget and the adopted budget are things that are shared with the public. So, um, you right. know, that and, part of and, the process is. Right. And certainly know. people can always submit comments. Okay. okay. So, with that, I would, uh, <clears throat> public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, next up. We are revisiting the public hearing on our dog park local law, which has been open since the summer months. We had some administrative issues to work out with both the village of Austin and the village of Briarcliff, um, and I believe that there's still a couple more to come, as this law contains some provisions that will affect residents of both jurisdictions. Um, the snag with the village of Austin has since been worked out, but not completely finalized. Is that what I'm hearing from council? They have adopted a resolution that authorizes the town clerk to administer the dog licensing for the incorporated village of Austining, um, and have that be done pursuant to the provisions of the town code. Uh, however, they have not adopted a local law that amends their code. The village code is currently drafted, and so there is still procedure in the village code that is inconsistent with what is being contemplated here. So. I would like to just try to reach out to the village and see where they are on that. Um, just because I, I thought that it was our understanding that the state some years back had suggested that adopt a resolution. So I'm not sure, not 100% sure if that if something has changed or if they needed to make that change or not, but that was my understanding. Well, just because it was done by resolution as opposed to local law and the, and the, the laws do still exist. And the resolution that they adopted actually contemplated having a local law drafted in order to address that. Okay. All right. So we're just going to have to, or do we have to wait for that local law? Is, is it relevant? What we're talking about right now is our dog parks, right? There are also provisions in there related to licensing and the timing of licensing. Okay. So 
and you've made already made some adjustments based on our feedback. So the feedback that we receive from the village of Briarcliff, it it appears to me that they aren't necessarily interested in changing the way that they administer the dog licenses to coincide with what we were hoping for, which would be the dog park. So instead, what we're suggesting is that you receive your license in the village of Briarcliff, and you live in the unincorporated. I mean, you live in the town general. Uh, of Ossining, as opposed to Town Mount Pleasant, um, and you would like to use the dog parks, you would then need to come to the clerk's office to present your up-to-date license from Village of Briarcliff, and you would then be issued the tag or, and, uh, you know, if it doesn't coincide, and whatever it's June, whatever it's June, and you, you know, it's, it's now June 1st, and you want to go use the dog park again, because you had only gotten one that was good until first, you know, you're going to have to go, you're going to have to still go back and get the permit from the clerk's office in Austin. We were hoping to make that work somehow in Briarcliff, but it didn't sound either that they weren't 100% clear on how that was going to happen or it was going to um, be uh, easy for them. You know, it was, it, it was going to be something that they were willing to we're just going to leave it where we are the ones who are going to administer the dog park passes and for permits, and they will come here and they can get that as long as they have the license from Fire Club. Okay, okay so we're just going to be waiting now for the Village of Austin. We'll follow up with them and see what their status is, um, and hopefully we can get that squared away. Okie doke. All right, so I think that that is it for... Uh, our comments. Is there anybody here to address the public on the dog park local law? Okay, going once, going twice, and I think I will take a motion then to we're just going to leave it open. Yeah, adjourn it to December. To adjourn 10th. it to December tenth. Okay, ready? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And finally, our third public hearing tonight is in reference to the speed limit on North State Road. As you may remember, the town is in the process of restriping North State Road to accommodate a bike lane with grant funding from NYSERDA's Clean Energy Communities Program. We've been working closely with our consultants from Sam Schwartz Engineers on this project, Zeke Murmel and Michael Flynn, and one of the recommendations that they made to help make the roadway safer for bicyclists, pedestrians, and ultimately cars as well was to reduce the speed limit on North State Road from 30 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. We con consulted with our police department and other first responders, and our police chief, Kevin Sylvester, was a supportive of this change. Tonight, we're opening the public hearing on the local law to change the speed limit on North State Road. Before I open this up to the public, I would like to note that we have received su some suggestions from residents and members of the town board to not only consider North State Road for a speed reduction, but other roadways as well. Um, I have reached out to the police chief about this, and uh, under, I understand that the um, police department is going to be embarking on a campaign for safer roads in the village and town, so we will be coordinating with them on that effort, but right now we're just focused on North State Road. So with that, is there anybody here to address the board on lowering the speed limit to 25 miles per hour? Hi, uh, Kim Jeffrey, 100B, Morningside Drive. Um, this is kind of new to me. I didn't quite catch that this was happening, and I understand that, that you guys are looking to do this for a bike path. Um, on one side or both sides of the streets? Both sides. So I'm a little concerned about the concept of putting bike paths on both sides of the streets on a, on a street. I, 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 I drive this street every day three, four, five times a day. I go to and from work that way. Um, I'm also in, that's where I live. So I'm on it all the time. I don't find there to be a particular amount of speeding on North State Road. Interestingly enough, considering it's more conducive, you would think, to that than many of the other streets in the town and the village. Um, I'm sure that there are residents who could give you many other streets that um, there seems to be some speeding going on. Um, it is, however, a corridor to get from 100 to 9A um, and or to Chappaqua to turn on to 9A. Most people seem to go within the limit, but I think slowing down traffic 
um, where there's not a whole lot of biking. I, I have never seen a biker actually on North State Road. I have seen bikers on Morningside Drive, which I think is dangerous. Um, and I understand that there's bike paths or indications for bikes on Hawks, which I also find to be not conducive to biking. Uh, we have blind turns all over both of those roadways. Um, I don't know that you need to lower the speed limit on that road in order to make it conducive to biking. It seems that the most recent accidents and fatalities that we've had, and maybe the police chief can speak to this better than I could, have been um, bikers and cars where there are rights of way of turning. <coughs> Um, I believe that recently in the past couple of years, there was a gentleman who was killed near Morningside Court based on that, and that there was also one a few years ago, maybe five, that was um, killed turning onto Tappan Terrace. Um, so I think, and I think the city is having that same issue where they're finding that there are problems with bikers and cars is not in the streets of the right of way, it's when there are turns and those right of ways. So I, I don't really think that you need to do this. And then I also think that the concern is that, um, that once you open up this, then you are going to have many other residents who are gonna say, I want a lowering and I want a lowering. Um, and traffic really isn't moving in Austin now. So to now reduce speed, I think, can cause some trouble with movement. Um, that's just, you know, one person's thought process. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Marissa Caruso to Redway Road. Uh, my question regarding this speed reduction, would that just be the portion of North State Road within the town of Austin, or will it extend through Currently, the Currently, it's just, it's just the portion in, in, in Austin, but we're working with the county because the other portions are county-owned. Through the village of Barcliffe Manor. North State Road extends to 9A through the village of Barcliffe Manor, and then the corner that falls into, I guess, Newcastle? Yeah, those are, those are county, those pieces of the road are county-owned. Okay, and I would just recommend that you put some signage in because I've actually heard of experiences where um, there are a tremendous number of bikers on 100 um, and th that turn off of North State Road. Um, so I would also explore the option of signage if biking is something that you plan on adding to that roadway. There's signage in the plan. <coughs> there is signage in the plan for, for the whole, for the road. And we're working with the county to extend it, if um, that's possible, at the next time that they have an opportunity to do so. So the county has been part of this process. Um, this this has been, um, you know, ongoing for some time, and uh, we've had a lot of conversations. And there is engine there, you know, this has all been engineered by a company that specializes. One of their specialties is um, specifically bikeability and walkability and access, and they're looking at all of those intersections. To make them to make the all of the crossings safer as well, um, so the striping will will also take that all into account. And um, again, just so you know, again the idea here with the Millwood Austin Go Trail is to find ways to connect from downtown Austin over the North County Trailway. Um, North, North State Road is uh, considered low hanging fruit. We did get a lot of feedback from uh, business owners. Um, during the process, we met, we went and knocked on every door of, of all the businesses on North State Road to get their input and feedback. And one of the things that everybody expressed was their concern about speed on that road. Um, also, our consultants rec are recommending the reduction of speed when you add, if you're adding the bike, bike lanes. And we're able to do that without having to widen the road. Um, because it is wide enough to accommodate two bike lanes uh, right now. So that's, um, that's where all that information has come from, from our professional engineering company and their recommendations. Uh, I, believe it's up, I, I believe it's up on our website, but if it's not, we will make sure that it is, but I'm pretty sure it is. So that. Else? Okay. Um, so may I have a motion? Does anybody else have any comments that they want to add? 
May I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing to December 10th? I moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ready opposed? All right. <laughs> so with that, I move to announcements. Happy almost Thanksgiving, everybody. I Can I help you guys? Are you guys looking for something in the back? Okay, thank you. Um, I hope everyone has a chance for some downtime to enjoy a peaceful holiday with family, friends, and loved ones. Uh, Town and Village offices will be closed on Thursday, November 28th, and Friday, November 29th, in observance of the holiday. And we will be back to serve you bright and early Monday morning. The Town Board will not be holding a formal meeting next week, but will be convening on Tuesday evening, December 3rd, to celebrate the contributions of all of our volunteer boards and committees. We will reconvene here on Tuesday, December 10th for our regular meeting at 7.30 p.m. where we plan to adopt the 2020 budget. There's not a whole lot going on over this weekend for obvious reasons, but here are a few events scheduled for next week that you won't, and this weekend that you won't want to miss. Are you ready to enter shopping mode? This weekend, make sure to stop by the fourth annual Austin Public Library Holiday Market, part of the Northeast Etsy Artists Collective. All kinds of handmade gifts like ceramics, jewelry, stationery, and more will be proudly displayed for sale. Buying from local artisans helps folks right here in our community, and a portion of the proceeds will benefit the friends of the Austin Public Library. It's a win, win, win. Okay, you guys get something, the local artisans get something, and the library. Like three wins. Um, check it out on Friday between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. and Saturday between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So that sounds like a much better deal than going to a mall. The library is just one place to shop this, this um, shop local this weekend. Small Business Saturday is November 30th, so make sure to get out there and buy your holiday gifts right here in town. Melita's Home Furnishings on Main Street in the Village of Austin is also hosting uh, their fifth annual Shop Small Saturday with an artisan market of local shops and handmade vendors. Between Melita's, Penny and Ting in downtown Austin, the restaurants on North State Road, and the shops on Pleasantville Road in Briarcliff, there are so many great options right here in our neighborhood. On Tuesday, December 3rd, join founder and president of Hudson Fusion, Cindy Penchina, and founder and executive director of Rehabilitation Through the Arts, Catherine Vokens, at Meet the Entrepreneur Next Door. Sing Sing Kill Brewery will host that from 7 to 9 p.m. Learn more about how to start your own business from those who have walked the path and get to know the founders of Austin Innovates. On Thursday, December 5th, Join the Austin Historical Society for a wine tasting at 196 Croton Avenue between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. There's a $20 admission fee, and a percentage of wine sold will benefit the Austin Historical Society Museum. RSVP by emailing OHS as in Sam M at optimum.net. And then make sure to be local on the evening of December 6th. The Village of Austin will be lighting the Market Square Tree at 6:30 p.m followed by the appearance of Santa and his team. Mike Risco Band will be there to play some holiday tunes and free hot chocolate and cookies for all. What more could you ask for on a Friday night? That same weekend, starting on Sunday, December 8th, the shop windows along Croton Avenue will be getting a seasonal makeover. The Austin Girl Scouts will be making things festive with some cheerful winter scenes. On Saturday, December 7th, visit the Austin Historical Society Museum again for military history genealogy. A presentation by Joyce Chirac Cole, starting at 1 p.m. Learn how to develop and execute a research plan for obtaining the military records of family members, as well as how to navigate obstacles on your journey. Finally, at this time, the Austin Lights Trolley Tour is all but sold out, but you can give your own version a try. Make sure to stop by Jenkins Court for a light display that will blow your mind. You can even set your car radio to a certain station and see the lights dance along with you. Opening night is this, sa is this Saturday, November 30th at 5 p.m. Just drive right up Havel Street. You can't miss it. Are there any liaison reports? No? Oh, yeah, Are there any other uh, announcements? Sorry, I do have one. You have an announcement? Or a liaison Okay, report. liaison report. Thank you. Okay, so the Osney Boat and Canoe Club is starting their holiday toy drive okay. over this coming weekend. Um, Places to leave toys so far include the uh, Mike Risco Music School, the uh, OVAC, Austin Ambulance, uh, Bob's Army Navy always has a box, and many, many others. So keep your eyes out, and the toys went well. 
excited about 16 Croton? We don't know yet. I, I mean, I haven't spoken to the village manager yet, but I mean, you certainly can put a box okay. on the third floor. Um, you're welcome okay. to do that. Somewhere in 16 yes, Croton Avenue, definitely we'll have a box. You can do that in the course. Um, and many more in the community. So keep your eyes out, and when you're shopping those Black Friday deals, feel free to pick up some toys for some of the kids who don't have as much in our community. Unwrapped. Unwrapped. Okay. Fantastic. Wonderful. All right. So with that, to our agenda. And yeah. um, I'm sorry. First, public comment on agenda items. Is there any public comment on agenda items? Hearing none. Okay. Uh, resolution A, approval of minutes, regular meeting, November 12th, 2019. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the November 12th, 2019 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You abstaining? I thought you were. Okay. Resolution B, approval of minutes, special meeting, November 19, 2019. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the November 19, 2019 minutes of the special meeting as presented. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Resolution C, approval of voucher detail report. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated November 26, 2019, the amount of $760,839.99. Do have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, in this check run, we had, this is, this is the voucher <clears throat> He didn't get to see it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so anyway, in, in this check run, we have the November IMA payment to the Village of Austin, as well as the December medical bill, the paving and milling work at Studio Hill Road and Haymont Terrace, performed by our annual paving bidder, and some bills for our legal and appraisal assistance on the Sleepy Hollow Golf Course tax certiorari. Um, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ready post? And we have an abstention. Sorry. Okay. Resolution D, flexible benefits plan, increase health care maximum for 2020. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to sign an amendment to the plan document with Sterling Benefits, Inc. to increase the maximum allowable annual health care maximum deduction to $2,750 for the plan year 2020. Um, do I have a motion? Second. Okay, so we offer a flexible spending plan to our staff fully funded by the employees themselves, and the limit to which they can contribute has gone up this year. This is a great way for all of our employees, whether or not they choose our health insurance, to use pre-tax dollars for out-of-pocket medical expenses, and so a higher limit is a good thing. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? You're abstaining? Okay. I don't think you Resolution E, Urban and Community Forestry Grant Program Round 15 Approval. Whereas the Town of Austin completed a townwide tree inventory of street trees in all town right-of-ways and trees in Dale Cemetery, Sparta Cemetery, and all town parks. And whereas the results from the inventory and corresponding management plan indicated a number of trees throughout Lewis Engle and Ryder Parks, town-owned parkland within the Town of Austin, necessitating removal or pruning in the immediate future. And whereas the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation's Urban and Community Forestry Program provides grant funding to support tree maintenance projects, specifically for tree removal and pruning with a required match of 25% of grant funding. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes the submission of an application to round 15 of the Urban and Community Forestry Grant Program for a tree maintenance project to be completed on town property located at 1 Westerly Road, Lewis Engel Park, and 43B Morningside Drive, Ryder Park, requesting 50000 in grant funding with a 12500 local match. And be it further resolved that the Town Board hereby authorizes the Supervisor's Office to submit this grant application on the town's behalf. We have a motion. So moved. So we all know um, how much we need to take care of our trees and make sure that they are that they are in places that it's safe for all the people who use our parks. And the fact that we've actually done a tree inventory now gives us a, a path towards getting some grant funding to help us out with that. So we're excited to be applying for this and we um, are hopeful that since we let, laid the groundwork to do so that 
get an offset from the state to help us with the tree care that is um, so needed in our town parks. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution F, renumbering of solar pilot local law, whereas at the town board's November 12, 2019 meeting, it adopted local law number 7 of 2019, entitled Amendments to Chapter 180 of the Town Code entitled Taxation to implement the solar energy system pilot law of the Town of Austin, New York. Now, therefore, be it resolved for the purposes of filing this local law with the Secretary of State, this local law shall be renumbered local law number 4 of 2019. Do we have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution G, Board of Ethics reappointment. Resolved that the town board hereby reappoints Christopher Camosa Osning to a five-year term on the Board of Assessment Review, retroactive to January 1, 2019, and set to expire on December 31st, 2023. Do we have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have no correspondence to be received and filed. Monthly reports, resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby accepts the following monthly reports for the month of October 2019, town supervisor's office. Do I have a motion? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, I also just neglected to mention that we do have several spots open on our volunteer boards that we will need to fill for 2020. So please keep your eyes peeled for an email from the town announcing upcoming vacancies and opportunities to get involved in the next few weeks. And, okay, next up. The report did visitor recognition. Is there anybody here to address the board? Hi, I'm Jeffrey. 100p Morningside Drive. Hi, everybody. So, um, this is very high. Um, I wanted to kind of speak to, ultimately, it's about the comprehensive plan and the fact that you are seeking to open it. And so, um, while I am no longer a town board member, I am very much an unincorporated town resident. Uh, looking at this past year, there definitely seems to be an agenda. That's the perception that comes from the resident side. Um, it started with the perception that the town supervisor was leaning towards approval of the Stony Lodge development. That perception was caused by the developer being asked to present twice in front of the board, while the residents were not invited to air their concerns or opinions and that further the developer has been at many fundraisers and contributing to town uh, events. Um, then came local laws four, five, and six, seemingly out of nowhere. I know that at least some of it wasn't out of nowhere. However, the details were murky and there was no study done. There were assertions and there was some marketing. Um, on the heels of all that, all of a sudden, there's this push to open the comprehensive plan. The plan is the roadmap for the town, a roadmap that based on the last two things I mentioned, uh, leads some to wonder what really is the agenda. The town residents have shown you that they don't like what they're seeing. They don't want development that will open the doors to density and urbanization. They said very loudly no to local laws four, five, and six. And they don't really want changes to the zoning. I know that there have been other supervisors and boards who have had plans, even based on good intentions. One built a police department, a police building that saddled us with a bond for years and years and caused all kinds of issues down the road. One wanted to recycle water at the spray park, which while laudable, had no background or research and ended up costing us $50,000 in work that we can't use. The residents seem to be concerned that there is a lack of trust at this time somewhat between the board and the residents. I submit that this might not be the time to open a comprehensive plan. While I could conceive of submitting my name for a steering committee, it would be the same as the school board meeting with the developer and asking for money 
even though they never want that development to happen. Um, I truly, truly suggest that you reconsider opening this comprehensive plan at this time. I think that there are issues between the residents and the town board right now and questions as to why you're doing it. We have this open issue with Stony Lodge with a lot of residents who have questions about where that's going to fall and what happens if when town property that is overseen, when property that the town has the ability to change zoning for, uh, I think there are trust issues with respect to that based on this. And there's some vision going on, but I don't think your residents are on board. And so I truly, truly think you should look back and think about going forward th with this and hold off because I don't know that anybody in the town, in the unincorporated town, is looking for changes at this time. I respectfully say thank you. Comments from the public? Your recognition on any subject? John? Um, I would like to uh, take to adjourn into our work, se our work session. Second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. So, for our work session, we're going to um, talk a little bit more about um, our budget. Um, as of tonight, we had um, met with all but two of our department heads, and we've had very little change to discuss. However, I wanted to revisit a few concepts that we talked about at last week's work session. Um, and to finalize which of any of these options the board wanted to add into the 2020 budget and in what amounts. Um, I'd like to start off specifically with the stewardship program for the unique area. And I'd like to give any feedback. Um, I had voted, or I, I shouldn't say I, but uh, started out with um, looking at a variety of different um, amounts and uh, we learned that the town of Cortland had um, about $10,000 in their budget specifically for um, helping out with um, some of the policing areas that we know that um, t that the village of Croton has um, spent quite a lot of money on policing um, on their side of the uh, river, specific, I think, access through Silver Lake. And um, we know that the stewardship program has been a low cost way for other um, state forest areas to effectuate uh, changes of behavior, which um, then work to better protect the land, as well as um, we have had some quality of life issues that are directly related to the unique area. So we had a presentation um, at our last work session by Diane Alden um, for, I think, I have a new title of the area. Um, maybe. Um, and uh, I think that, there, that her ask was $3,600. So um, I just wanted to see if she said that that was about 10% of the, or the cost of the program. Um, which most of which is hoping they're hoping we're all hoping to get funding from um, New York State through the DEC and then if that's true then um, they're trying they need to guarantee a certain amount of money to the stewardship program that's going to end up having to be done before state budget is issued and before the that amount of money so they're hoping to get support from uh, uh, local um, I mean, all the local municipalities who are affected as well as um, outside funds that they're seeking. That's so, you know, our police have gone down there, but we don't regularly. We're not really, we can't. It's not our land. Right, it's not okay. our land. I'm we just asking leave. for a yes. We can patrol, yes, okay. correct. We can patrol <coughs> the area outside, which is pieces that where the town is impacted. Like, right, no, like I we've understand talked that. about. Well, what I'm saying is, you know, we're not spending as much as Croton or Cortland on law enforcement, and they're also donating money 
um, our budgets to this area. Um, I think we should also give some, uh, a lot of our residents use that area. A lot of our residents are being inconvenienced by the overflow of parking from that area and garbage from the area. So I think it's um, in our interest to be part of this. It's 36,000 and they were asking for us to I mean, I'm definitely with 2,500. I could probably. I'm yeah. somewhere around 25 in my head, but I could. Yeah, I'd rather have the lower number. <laughs> I, I, I just, you know, I think in a lot of ways it's, it's a village of Croton problem. Well, maybe they don't want some of our residents there. And uh, that's concerning to me. I mean, if, you know, we do get a lot of calls over the summer from people who live on Waterview, people who live on Riverview Farm Road, and you know, Old Albany Post Road. I mean, people are parking all over the place and impacting also, in, at, they, they park at Gerlach Park. So, um, you know, we're all, and I don't actually think, I think a lot of people are coming up from the Bronx and uh, yeah, they're not really Brooklyn. our residents. Some sometimes it is that they are our residents, but the um, I have to say that I think that um, Diane Alden has been extremely welcoming and trying to make it as you know personally, like she personally goes out of her way to be very welcoming. Um, the stewardship program is really you know designed specifically to just t teach people how to be um, stewards of the land specifically because it is public land and we want it to be able to be enjoyed for many years to come but it's state land so we believe the state should be paying for all of these things um the state has basically said they need they want to see a commitment also from the municipalities that we're all working hand hand in hand because it is a land like landlocked but it's a you know a piece of um land that is surrounded by multiple municipalities and while Croton and Cortland are basically you know right there we are also impacted by it so oh I didn't what, what I'm thinking is, is that better it's it's it right now it looks like everybody else's problem Something happens down there. Somebody gets hurried up, and that is a absolutely a, 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 an accident waiting to happen. I, I think we need to be in trying to prevent. That. Well, I mean, we can certainly. There's one other thing that yep. concerns me is the um, the E. coli counts are up in the river, and a lot of our residents do fish there and eat the fish. Um, and I know of several kayakers that have gone up and have been surprised. They were enjoying their nice ride, and they were surprised. But we're not not having people there. We're just well, we teaching have to, them how not to damage the environment while they visit. Correct. I mean, there are other programs that we've been also advocating for where they can let the number of people that actually property. Because, again, it's right now for the last couple summers, you know, Social media has kind of blown up the um, people knowing about this and, and finding their way there, and people are getting there all sorts of different ways, whether it's from Uber or driving and parking illegally or all these things. And, you know, we can keep trying to put pieces in place, but people are still going to find a way. They're finding ways to get there, and it's actually just too many people now getting to the property. So um, I think that, again, just showing a good show of faith, and, you know, again, if that's $2,500, I think that that would – that's that's okay um, for us again from you know just slightly down the road that's is that where everybody is at then yeah, twenty five hundred dollars okay. all right so let's move on um, so I don't actually think that there's really anything to talk about we were going to talk about energized re residential because um, for the last couple of years some of the other communities that are part of energize were uh, were putting money towards that program but I don't think that there's enough right now in place for energized residential for us to make a contribution to it so i would just recommend that we don't consider that uh for the 2020 budget um 
As far as the equity task force is concerned, we talked about um, we don't really know. We're just in the very early stages, and um, we're hoping that we might be able to get a meeting together um, next week, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, to just start talking about what equity task force is going to look like and it's going to be part of it. And um, we did get a couple names from the NAACP, um, so we were going to kind of just start with with them to see if we could you know, start forming. But we had talked about possibly having somebody as a facilitator um, and also possibly having, um, um, you know, some kind of event at some point during, but we wanted to just Agreed. Put some money aside to make sure that those programs are supported and, and okay. Uh, do you have other any amount? Oh, I recommend a thousand. No. One thousand. I think that's enough. That sounds, sounds I'd even go me. a little higher, but okay. And then finally, we have Forest of Fears. Um, we talked about um, how we might want to support this, and if it's if we want to support it with um, in-kind donations, or if it as a budgetary item, like other municipalities do, um, where they actually put money in for big events. We have other events like this. Um, that are supported, but we don't charge for those other events and um, are volunteer run. Um, Forest of Fears is a combination of volunteers, and we do pay some of the people um, who organize the event. So, um, is there um, anybody who's interested in funding this, or do we want to continue to fund it as, um, uh, like, as in-kind donations, which is just um, labor? I think if we didn't charge them for the labor and used it like um, the Earth Day event or where we're giving, where we're, that way we're not using, actually handing municipal funds out, but we're using our park and helping them set up as an event. Um, that might be the way to go after reading some of the emails that we got. I mean, because we had been asking them to pay um, overtime, we'd been asking them to pay the salaries of the employees when they did anything, and I think we could do a better job of supporting the event at the same time as not giving away money. And that way it could be a benefit if they wanted to benefit certain things. I mean, I think we certainly can also talk. Well, it should be, it can be a recreation program about if it was a recreation program and then that were the case, it would again, Then we could pay the people who run the program. Different, right, it would be. That's over. a good idea. That would be another option. We haven't had that opportunity yet to sit down with the recreation department. All right, so we have more conversation. We do, but as far as funding it, um, kind of a increase to our budget. A programmatic budget. You want to say anything else, Natty? About okay. Uh, I'm more in line with the in kind. Um, I, I think it's a good idea. This. Okay, I'm sorry, but I haven't. Uh, not up to. Okay, fair. Okay, fair. Um, okay, so I think I think the recommendation would be just to leave it um, as is, um, not to actually put specific funds. Behind it. All right, and I think that um, the only yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, I think you know we we like like the supervisor mentioned. We have two more department head meetings that that we still need to go through. Um, I can't imagine there's going to be a, a whole heck of a lot that the board is going to want to change in there because I don't think that anything that either of those department heads asked for was was in any way different from what they asked for last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I think based on the outcome of you know these 
three adjustments, um, what I mentioned earlier about the capital plan and the results of our other seven budget meetings. I think maybe we have 20 changes in, in total. Um, so, you know, we, we've not changed much from, from what the tentative budget was. Um, you know, certainly it's still a work in progress and, you know, until it's done, it's not done. So, um, you know, that's, that's sort of where we're at right now in case there was anything that, that came to anyone, you know, after having sat down with the department heads that, that they gave some more thought to. But, So, good news. All right. So at this time, I would ask for a motion to adjourn into executive session for advice of council. Do you have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So one last reminder, town and village offices will be closed on Thursday the 28th and Friday the 29th, and the town board will not be meeting formally next week. Our next town board meeting will take place on Tuesday, December 10th at 7.30 p.m. right here at the courthouse. On behalf of the entire town board, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving and peaceful time with your loved ones. Good night, everyone.